Hey everyone, welcome. Uh, I'm Ritesh Patel, a lead product at Nirmata. And uh, today we're going to talk about Backstack. So, uh, yeah, no, and I'm uh, Murph. Uh, I'm uh, responsible for field engineering in EMEA at Upbound. Awesome. So let's get started. Um, so, you know, thank you everyone. Actually, you know, it's nice to see so many people this uh, you know, last day of KubeCon show up for this talk. Um, so this is the agenda. We'll start. Uh, we'll talk about uh, you know platform engineering and you know how that's kind of evolving and the value it provides. Um, and then we'll get into the the actual uh, you know meat of the discussion uh, on on what we've kind of seen uh, the patterns we've seen emerge in the community and and uh, you know how we've uh, collaborated together to uh, come up with with a reference architecture uh, for platform um, for in developer platform. So. I'm assuming most of you know, you know, uh, what platform engineering is all about. Uh, there have been, I think, last year there were like barely any talks on on this topic, but this year there's 20 plus talks. Uh, you know, platform engineering ultimately enables um, enterprises to to deliver shared platforms that can be leveraged by by multiple teams. And uh, as a platform engineer, there's several things um, that that a platform engineer is responsible for right from designing the platform to you know implementing it you know aut making sure all of the various capabilities are automated um, and then operating that platform providing any assistance needed for troubleshooting um, you know monitoring uh, things of that nature and, and 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 ensuring that you know platform continues to evolve as the need of uh, you know different applications and, and teams evolve so obviously, all of this is kind of, you know, uh, work like there, uh, there has to be some business benefits for uh, any organization to invest in this, right? So uh, some of the core benefits that that uh, you know we see uh, organizations kind of get out of uh, investing in in platform engineering is uh, you know reducing the overall complexity, having to deal with uh, you know a single platform versus multiple uh, disparate platforms. Uh, one one goal and the benefit is uh, uh, in enabling developer agility with things like self-service, uh, eliminating eliminating you know silos and different teams doing different things. Uh, obviously, helping in helping with collaboration. Um, having shared platforms enables uh, you know better resource utilization, so uh, that also helps um, overall optimize overall cost. And then you know uh, it. Having to just secure uh, a single platform versus a lot of different, you know, uh, infrastructure uh, mitigates risk. So these are some of the key benefits, um, you know, that we've seen initial uh, adopters of platform engineering um, get. Right. So, so when you start looking at what does a platform require, um, some of the things that a platform kind of requirements that come up are you want the platform, you know, to be composable. Uh, th there's no one size fits all. Every organization is different, uh, you know. So being able to pick the right tools, pick the right you know components for your platform becomes important. If you're running on cloud, I mean, one of the reasons uh, Kubernetes is ad adopted is for its uh, uniform API, independent of you know which infrastructure you run on. So obviously, being cloud agnostic is a key uh, key requirement you know, in most of the times. Uh, using components, if you're, uh, you know, a Kubernetes native, helps actually, you know, uh, make the platform easier to operate. Uh, and then, you know, in 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 this case, we'll show how, we'll show how we are using some of the mature Kubernetes uh, CNCF components uh, for a platform. And uh, you know, as you as the platform evolves, uh, you want that flexibility, extensibility to be able to add more capabilities uh, as as needed. So if you if you're not familiar, actually CNCF has a platform working group. Uh, they've act, they've uh, you know put out a ref, kind of a high level. Um, um, I, I wouldn't call it an architecture, but more like what a platform should include. What are the different uh, you know components, and and even highlighted some other projects. So we're going to kind of go off of this uh, reference architecture and show you what we have uh, you know seen. Um, some of the earlier adopters uh, do uh, build uh, for a platform. So, and we are calling this Backstack. 
BAC stands for four projects that are involved in this reference architecture. First one being Backstage. Um, that's for uh, developer portal. Most of you may be familiar with it. Several talks uh, you know, on Backstage. It was originally conceived by Spotify and then um, donated to CNCF. Next, Argo CD. Um, GitOps is very important. Uh, so, you know, Argo CD is one of the uh, core uh, components of this stack uh, and to provide that GitOps capability. And, you know, shout out to Nick here from Argo CD who kind of helped collaborate on this, on this stack and this platform. So, you know, thanks, Nick. Next one is Crossplane. Uh, Crossplane, uh, as you may know, is universal control plane, uh, helps with provisioning, automation, uh, and, um, you know, we'll go deeper into how this uh, enables the platform. And uh, finally, Kiverno uh, for policy as code, governance, security automation uh, for your platform, right? So together, these form the back stack, and we're going to jump into the demo. Uh, Murph here is going to lead the demo. Thanks, yeah. Murph. Yeah, thanks, Ritesh. So let's have a look at how all these things are put together. And we're not the first people to combine these four technologies. Um, we represent uh, the organizations that are chiefly maintaining these technologies. And we wanted to build uh, an example of how you can put them all together. Because if you're starting from nothing, it can be quite challenging. So think of this as the seed for, um, for what you can do and to highlight some of the key areas of integration where the different technologies are complementary. To begin with, um, let me actually start with this little diagram here. Uh, our use case today is as a platform engineering group, we are tasked with exposing several different uh, capabilities to our organization. But the first one is uh, Kubernetes clusters as a service, or parts of the organization need to spin up uh, Kubernetes capabilities in different clouds. They need EKS, they need AKS, uh, and, and we're gonna give it to them. Right? So the uh, backstage environment, um, the catalog itself uh, contains the, the components of itself in the catalog. Um, so you can see all, all four of them uh, sitting here as uh, running in the demo cluster. They're all running in a single cluster. Um, but one of the things that we've created is uh, we're using the backstage scaffolder to create claims for infrastructure. And we'll talk a bit about what that actually means. But let's go ahead and ask for a new AKS cluster. Uh, we're going to give it a name that we're going to use to, to, respond, to uh, refer to it. Let's call it Backstack uh, Demo. Very creative. We're going to put it in West Europe because I know that I have quota in West Europe. Um, we're gonna make this thing real big. We're gonna say we want five, um, five nodes in our, our node group, and we're gonna go from there. Ultimately, our scaffolder is going to create a pull request in our repo, so let's identify the repo here, cross-plane contrib, and we're putting it in the backstack repo. because mono repos are fun. Uh, the scaffolder is really not doing a whole lot of heavy lifting. One of the um, advantages and, and challenges with Backstage, um, and I'll admit that about 80% of my time building this demo was spent learning how to use Backstage, because I'm not a React programmer. Um, and uh, about 90% of the remaining 20% was spent getting my install script to work right uh, because I, I really wanted to be able to just say uh, bash install and, and have it all work. And as anyone who's ever built a demo knows, that's where everything goes in your time. So I want to highlight that because barely any of the time building this demo was actually spent building the parts that are getting the work done. Um, but they are getting the work done. And so we'll, we'll look at what they look like. So this creates a pull request. We open that up and let's go over to GitHub and accept it. Um, we can actually see the, um, the request has come in. The shape of the claim here, is that big enough to see? Yeah, excellent. Um, is a Kubernetes resource. Um, this is a custom resource type 
It's exposed by Crossplane. Crossplane allows you to define your infrastructure API and, uh, and expose custom resource types for it. So all Backstage had to do was scaffold out a, uh, that claim YAML, and once that gets moved into the control plane, the control plane can go off and do its thing. Um, how will it get from here into the control plane, I wonder? So let's confirm the merge, and we'll follow it around the circle. And before we go, I want to highlight that we have these checks running. The DCO check is, is mad at me because it wants me to sign things off. But uh, here, we're, um, we're running a Kyverno uh, workflow. We're able to run Kyverno in the, um, in the, the GitHub uh, and as a response to the pull request and validate the cluster ahead of time. So we can deny uh, pull requests at this level, and then we can again run those pol same policies inside the cluster to perform audit and enforcement uh, once the request gets submitted into, uh, into the environment. So that should be enough time for this to synchronize, and I will collapse the pre-built one so this is our new uh, Backstack demo, and I didn't put this on, um, on AutoSync because I like this part. This is my favorite thing. It just starts going, right? So all that was submitted into the control plane was that single YAML, that single uh, claim, and the composition, as defined by Crossplane, is going out, and it's build it has two sub-compositions here, one for the network, one for the Kubernetes cluster itself, and then each of those has a set of managed resources that compose together the total platform that's being exposed. Um, and so, great, we've gone from UI to Git, awesome. We've gone from Git into our control plane, great, and now we're building out uh, external infrastructure that we can use. But it would be really lovely if that external infrastructure made it back into Backstage. So what we want to see now in our resource list are the existing clusters. Um, now, I apologize for the, the formatting here. Remember, I said I am not a React programmer. Um, so the, uh, the styles are a little sideways. Um, but we have our, uh, our Kubernetes clusters here, and we can even see um, the uh, cube config. The cube configs that are registered by these clusters are registered as secrets in the uh, control plane, and then we can externalize them to external secret stores, in this case, uh, Vault. Um, so the, uh, we're using Vault in a very insecure way. It's configured in dev mode which means you all know the token. Um, but luckily, it's only on the loopback interface, so it's fine. Um, the cube config here is, is available, so that if we want to start talking to our cluster, we want to start deploying things into our cluster, we can with any tool that's available to us. But wouldn't it be great if that cluster was already registered within uh, Argo so that we can start targeting applications there. So wiring, uh, so not only are we loading the cube config into Vault so that external users can use it, but we've already registered that cluster ID into Argo, so I can use my other, not the radar, my other scaffold, a new application deployment. And for our purposes, we're gonna borrow uh, the guest book from, from the Argo uh, demo environment. So we'll just call this guy guest book. And the source repository, and let's see if I can type this without error. Nick, tell me if I get it wrong. OCD example apps, all right. And then the path is just helm, not absolute path, helm, this book. And we want to send it over to the uh, pre-built cluster because the demo cluster is still building. And we will, again, we're just creating a pull request. So we're going to go around the circle. We're going to go around the circle again. So cross-plane contrib. 
tech stack. Now we're creating a new application request, pull request. Fetch our template, scaffold our pull request, and let's go accept that pull request. All checks have failed because I did not sign it off. Uh, we, we just moved this into a more stringent repository last night, so I didn't have time to add the sign off to the scaffolder. Um, fortunately, I'm an admin on this repo, so I can push it anyway. Uh, so now we have our, um, our application is set up in the, um, set up in the Git repository, but nothing is syncing here, right? Uh, because what we're missing is an app of apps to uh, register from that location. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to actually enhance my, um, my hub to now pre-build that. Um, we're looking here at the, uh, the implementation for the hub cluster itself. Uh, so if we think of the, the Backstack hub as having key components, we've got Argo CD, Backstage, Kyverno, Vault, uh, Cert Manager, so we can self-sign everything. Um, and then importantly, if we look here, we can see that we were pre-creating this cluster's application. Um, what I would like to do is enhance my composition to now include um, the application's composition, uh, in uh, application in there. So we're gonna copy, did I copy? I did not copy. Highlighted, but did not copy. And we'll paste this here. No, did I do it twice in a row? Isn't that the rule in jazz? If you make a mistake, do it twice. Copy, paste, ha ha, there we go. But everything is off by one, there we go. So we're gonna call this the Argo Applications application. We're gonna call it Applications. We're gonna look at the Applications path. And one of the things you'll notice here is this repo URL is, is just nonsense. We're using the patch and transform mechanism within Crossplane to take uh, the URL that was passed in via the API we built, the hub API we built, and we're going to, to patch it in and replace it here. Um, if we want to look at the, um, the uh, uh, API shape itself, we can. We can actually query that straight out of the, um, clear that, there we go. Um, we can actually look at the shape of the API by asking Kubernetes to explain it to us. So we're going to explain the hub spec parameters. So these are the parameters that we passed in. When, I, when this thing provisions, when the, the hub provisions, step one, spin up local cluster. Step two, install crossplane. Step three, deploy a hub, and Crossplane will go out and do it. And it needs a bit of information. Argo CD config, Backstage config, um, these are the, um, just the host names uh, for ingress control in order to configure those uh, charts properly. And then importantly, this repo URL. So we pass in the, the repository URL where everything's gonna be, um, where everything's gonna be connected. So we can go back here and we see that we've finished updating our composition to now use that same information and to deploy this additional application. So all we need to do is uh, update our composition within the control plane. Now there's a whole life cycle for packaging and deploying into a container registry. Uh, you can use Argo in order to synchronize that uh, back down into your control plane, or you can cheat and just uh, apply directly. So if we want to apply the hub, we can just update our hub directly. Um, and what we'll see is the um, application will get updated, the, the new uh, resource will get pushed out. Um, we can actually have a look at that if we want to. Let's have a look at the uh, 
resource, uh, objects is what it's called. Objects, there we go. Um, so we can see our new application here, which is being um, which is being provisioned, and we can see the values that we put in there um, directly, successfully created um, our, our new application, and we can see that it's been um, put in place, right? And again, because I didn't make it auto sync, it's out of uh, out of date, but now we can synchronize it. And the guest book application, which was synchronized down in there, will now deploy into our, um, into our target cluster. We can synchronize this one. Layered into the, um, the remote endpoint. And if we go back while that's starting, let's grab our cube config, download that, and we're going we're gonna to cheat again. We're going to use some port forwarding because I didn't want to set up ingress on all these clusters. Um, but if we pull down, let's move from downloads. To cube config. grab our service. We can see our, our Helm guestbook here. This guestbook is, is ready to go. Let's forward this port locally to, let's make it 180. Does not want to send that. Well, should be good to go. Hmm. You know, this is what you get for doing it live. But ultimately, um, oh, it's still starting, that's why. Um, too fast for the demo. Let's see here. Oh, we even have our scan report from Kyverno telling us about all the things we did wrong with this deployment. Um, luckily, we have it set to, um, uh, we have it set to audit, but it's letting us know, you know, are we, are we, Meeting the pod security standards. Are we meeting uh, our different deployment targets? Um, and uh, I didn't call this out earlier, but I should have done. We actually have the um, Kyverno generate policy in place that is making sure that these app sets get deployed into the new cluster. So when a new cluster comes in, we're deploying these app sets into uh, those clusters. We're layering in applications. So each of the technologies in the stack has its part to play. Um, uh, and there's a, there's a natural assumption uh, which technology can do what, uh, but then you find that uh, they can do all sorts of new and exciting things around that. Uh, when I was first setting up the relationship between Crossplane and Argo CD, uh, I needed to be able to register those cube configs into Argo CD and to be able to uh, set up the relationships with these additional clusters. Oh, look, the demo cluster finished provisioning. Um, but I couldn't do that because Argo has its own format for how clusters are registered and how you set up the connection information. You can't just drop a cube config in there and, and call it a day. You need to provide specific information in a specific format. Uh, I didn't know how to do that. Uh, so when I went looking for a tool, it turned out the tool I needed was already in my hands and I'd been using it to enforce policies on my cluster. So a Kyverno generate policy stands in between uh, Crossplane and Argo in order to make sure that the 
um, inputs are correct and the outputs are correct and, uh, and matches up with what each technology is expecting. And we can actually see that back here in the, in the composition where we set it up. If we collapse this down. This uh, uh, generation cluster policy here, right? So this, this policy is responsible for watching for cube config secrets and transforming them into an Argo friendly uh, config that can then be used to, to set up the connections into everything. Um, so we've gone around the circle twice. Uh, we've we've uh, asked our catalog to build us uh, a um, to, to build us a spoke cluster. Uh, once that cluster was up and running, we went back to the catalog and asked it to deploy an application. Um, you can use the standard scaffolding to create whole new applications to, and load those into the environment. At this point, you start to transition from, well, how the hell am I gonna build that to what else can I build? Um, and I really want to, to stress, none of my time was spent actually doing this stuff. Uh, it's a handful of YAML files for uh, building the APIs. When I decided I wanted a hub API, this is all it took to, to build that out. And any time I needed a new component, it was just as simple as what we did earlier. Um, for the policies, these all exist, right? So all of these Kyverno policies that are enforcing correctness on the cluster size, on the node counts, on the uh, pod rules, they're just out there. Um, Argo has been synchronizing things from Git into control planes and making sure that is done um, uh, efficiently, effectively, and you know, with the rollouts and all the different workflow that goes around that for ages, right? And it just works, and all it takes is a little bit of YAML to say, oh yeah, watch this repo and make sure things happen properly. Um, so the effort required to actually build it up and tie them all together was really was remarkably easy. Um, the harder part was getting this bash script to do what I wanted it to do. Um, so uh, at that, with that, I think we've covered everything we wanted to cover demo-wise. So just a couple things to wrap up with. What's next? Obviously, um, the bootstrapping that's happening here is being driven primarily by this install script. It's all aimed at a local deployment. However, that hub composition Nothing in that requires you to be running locally. You can deploy that into any Kubernetes cluster you want. You could even host the root control plane external to that cluster, and it'll layer in everything you need into that environment. Additional use cases, right? So uh, namespace as a service, workload environments as a service, and then starting to load in additional capabilities uh, from your control plane. Uh, so I just recorded a video for a customer this morning their use case is we need to provide object storage as a service. Right? So how do I, how would I as a platform engineer build out that capability and ensure that I'm building my S3 buckets with the right set of policies, with the right set of configurations, but only require the developer to give me a, a bucket name as I go. Um, and you can build that out. So that, uh, that uh, composition already exists and you can define that API and, and roll that out within your application. So all all these different use cases start to become available to you. Um, other things that we wanted to add were around, yeah. yeah. around things like, you know, providing, adding dashboards. So we're using several different components, making sure those components are up and running. As a, as a platform engineer, you would want to know your Argo CD is healthy, Kiverno is healthy, uh, you know, cross-plane providers are up and running. So having that kind of central, you know, dashboard um, using Prometheus or something like uh, Prometheus or uh, Grafana, you know, that would be uh, something we would add next. And then potentially integration with other, other uh, you know, projects, right? So that's, uh, those are things we are looking at uh, next, but um, you know, the repo is already live, so please you know, try it out, uh, provide feedback, you know, file issues. Um, we'll continue to evolve this, you know, working with uh, um, you know, the acuity team, the abound team, uh, and uh, you know, uh, the backstage community. Hmm. Absolutely, yeah. We you'll notice we already snuck one extra letter in there with uh, with Vault, right? So it's 
this can get, you can add letters all day long, but this is really the core of what, what you need to go full circle. Um, and then please, 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 if you liked what you heard, um, uh, leave feedback on this session. Uh, and if you didn't, that's okay too, you can, you can leave feedback. Um, thank you very much, any questions? Yeah, I think we have microphones here. here. There's a mic here and, and a mic over there. Uh, yeah, there. This, this is less of a question, more of a comment, but I really just wanted to say thank you for this idea and this stack. I've been participating in the working group on platforms for the last couple of months as part of the maturity model and some other things. And the idea of reference architecture for platforms has come up a lot. Mm. There's been some discussions going on and for you to sort of say, there are so many tools available in the landscape, these four, you can draw a nice line around them and deliver a ton of value with this package that works really well together, I think is extremely valuable. And as an end user, like, I'm gonna go home and try this. Like, these are already tools we're starting to use. We're using Argo CD, we're not using the others yet, but we're trialing backstage, like, I want this package as a whole. You know, I don't wanna have to solve it on my own. Yeah. I appreciate that you've provided this, like, Bootstrap. Absolutely. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the talk. I had a quick question on: Do you do like time to live in Caverno? How do you control the spread of this? If I'm pushing something out to a cloud, I want to know I'm not going to build up my bill to be. <laughs> yeah. Know. Great question, right? And Caverno. So you know, we mostly talk about uh, you know validation, mutation, generation policies, but Caverno can also have there's cleanup policies, so you can actually set up you know, uh, exactly what you're talking about. If you want to clean up certain resources be after a certain period of time, that can be done as well. So uh, one thing to mention about Kiverno, right? A lot of times it's used for like, you know, security checks, but it's a great tool like uh, you know, Murph pointed out for automation. And what we've heard from a lot of users is they've, had, they've you know, stopped writing controllers, custom controllers, and leverage Kiverno for that kind of automation, right, through web books and so on. So, yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, amen to the first comment. This is amazing. Um, I'm familiar with Backstage and Argo, but Crossplane is new to me. And yeah. a big problem that my team's been facing is, you know, Backstage is great for spinning up stuff that looks correct at the time of creation, but what people are calling the day two problem, right, of, hey, I've just realized I need a new type of user in this reference application or a new type of permission or whatever. Hmm. It sounds like Crossplane is a solution to that, right? I would define a type of application in Crossplane, update the definition in Crossplane and everything else would magically filter out. Am I reading that right? Or? Yeah, absolutely. So for, for those, uh, we've had a few different talks and it, uh, after the fact, you should absolutely go back and watch um, the talk with Jared and Clement from uh, uh, consensus. They did a great one about streamlining infrastructure with Crossplane uh, two days ago. I think it was on Tuesday. Um, watch their talk because it was it was excellent. Um, but at a, a base level, Crossplane is a, a the answer to the question of what if Kubernetes, but for all the things. There's essentially two abstraction layers. There's a set of providers that integrate with any external API. Um, we're using it here to drive. Uh, Azure and AWS and to drive the external uh, things, but we're also using it to layer in Helm charts, to layer in other Kubernetes objects, and to then expose it, and that's the, where the second abstraction layer comes in, is to expose that behind a custom API. I define the shape of the API based off of that definition, and then I can have multiple different implementations behind it, where, uh, and so, uh, I can have my standard implementation. Everybody who wants a cluster gets a cluster, except for these guys, they're special, and we're gonna build them a one-off composition that uh, they can select. So they're still using the same API, but they're providing some kind of metadata, usually an annotation or a label, or, or even if, it's, if you're building out choice directly within the platform, you'll make it a parameter in the spec, but you have sort of those different layers. But if it's a one-off, it's usually a label. Um, uh, you'll define a label on that type that then allows the back end to choose the right composition that has the correct behavior. Gotcha. And a, a publication of a new version of a cross-plane 
whatever the entity is called, yeah. the CRD or whatever, yeah. will get picked up by consumers. Exactly. Yeah, the default wow. behavior is to auto-update. You can change that uh, to manual update. But the default behavior is if I put a new composition revision out there, which is what we saw earlier, I, I changed the composition, I kubectl applied it into the cluster, and then uh, a new composition revision was generated, and the any instance that had been tied to the old revision jumped to the new revision and started doing that new behavior. Got it. Yeah. This is staggering. Yeah, yeah it's, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we are out of time, but we'll be here if you guys have any other questions. Any other questions, meet us up here. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yeah. Thank you.